The state budget process is underway, but what will it mean for you? I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me is Delaware State Representative Paul Bomback. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Jill. Let's talk first about the process. The governor puts forward his proposed budget, which essentially is a, a set of priorities and ideas that need to be funded through through the state. Uh, but then a process goes into place where you hear from different departments and there's public input. Give us an idea as to what happens. Sure. Really, the, the governor in January passes the baton says, here's our proposed budget. It's a starting point. Then the Joint Finance Committee members of both houses um, will meet regularly a lot in February and March, but also from then until June, and hear from each of the departments and hear why they want to have an increase of so much or they need the same dollars as last time or whatever. And you'll also hear from the public who are affected by that department and say, they're doing some good things and we really support this increase or, you know, we're not really happy with them and we think they need to be more responsible. So it's a, it's a very good process in Delaware. Um, but really the baton is in the hands of the legislature right now and specifically the Joint Finance Committee. And that's part of the process, but you also receive regular financial updates as part of this process. You don't just take those first numbers given in a proposed budget. You look at the finances throughout as you work on a budget document. Absolutely. There's a, a wonderful group called DFAC, Delaware Economic Forecasting Advisory Council. So it has academics, has people in business, people in government who come forward and look at all the, the latest numbers and say, our best guess for next fiscal year Year, July 1st to June 30th is going to be X billion dollars um, and precisely and we're only allowed to, to commit to spend 98% of that we're not allowed to have an unbalanced budget we need to actually have a, an extra balanced budget so uh, we get those updates roughly once a quarter but as the budget process comes up it then becomes once a month so we're getting these updates and really we're not finalizing the budget until June when we get the latest most most accurate uh, expectation projection and uh, as we mentioned you get these uh, at this point monthly uh, let's talk about some of the fixed priorities in a budget including education funding Medicaid funding these are things that are increasing in terms of costs and you need to consider that as part of the process oh absolutely even in a, in a growth state you may be growing two percent or so for your revenues but these things when you have kids and you've got hundreds more kids coming in this year versus last year next year versus this year those are fixed costs and we have to increase them it doesn't we can't just say oh you can't increase it more than two percent if we have kids we need the teachers for them and if we have Medicaid patients we need to make sure we provide the, the state mandated services medical services for them so those can take a bigger chunk out of the budget which leaves less for the uh, more optional uh, programs that, that make life better. And uh, when we talk about these programs and new initiatives to consider, you are considering that as part of this process. Let's talk about some of the things that may potentially happen, an increase in the gas tax. This would be 10 cents a gallon. Where does that idea stand? Uh, it's a proposal. It's not very popular. Uh, but uh, I think one of the reasons that uh, it was made is that there's a real need to improve our, our roads, our schools, and our, and our um, bridges. And one way to fund them um, is through a gas tax. Pretty much the users of that of those roads and bridges are paying to help maintain those. That makes sense. The question is, is the 10 cent uh, approach the best approach? Is now the right time for that? Uh, we need to be uh, maintaining our, our schools, roads, and bridges, and uh, we need to be doing a better job. So That's a focus on infrastructure there and, and how to fund it. Uh, we just have a few seconds left about wastewater management. This is another idea. People would be paying, households would be paying an average of $50 a year. Yeah, that's the average for households. Also, businesses need to be paying because they're also affected by that. So it's some, some states call it a flush tax. So uh, whatever you get, you get out of your house or your, your business, you have to pay to help the state make sure that our, our waterways are good, that we can actually eat the fish in our streams. All right. Thanks so much for being with us. Come back. Give us an update. Let us know how this is progressing. I'd love to. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking with Delaware State Representative Paul Baumbach. I'm Jill Horner.